Okay, guys, as promised, I'm going to build from scratch for you the Payne Wand. Okay, uh, I have a shaft that I've set up for my drill. And as you can see, this one is marked to 81 uh, winds. We place it in our drill. We lock it in. And then we take our wire. And in this case, what we're using is a <clears throat> 14 gauge. You place the tip through a hole that I've drilled in the end. You just put a little bit so you can remove it when it's time to remove it. Okay. You put your drill in reverse and you begin your winding. It's, it's, it's quite this simple. Eighty one. Okay. And what you want to do once you reach 81 is give it maybe an extra three or four winds. Okay. And then you cut off your end right about there. You remove it from your drill in this case. That's why we left it that little extra space so that we can back this out. You pull it out of the drill, your shaft, and you remove. This is going to be your magnetical coil. For the smaller one, what we're going to use in that case is we remove that shaft, we place in a smaller diameter shaft. In this case, this one will be same situation. We have a hole drilled in the tip. We have our markings on the bar and we grab our wire, same situation. Um, we place it through the hole, and in some cases you might find where your coil or your wire is just a little bit wider than your coil, but that's not a problem. So you take any kind of scrap that you may have laying around, you place that on the tip, okay? You place it on the tip, or if that seems to want to resist, you grab another piece as you continue to work and you place it in the tip you just kind of you know make a little loop you put your wire through the loop kind of like so and you bend it over a little bit okay that's what you call problem solving on the fly okay you put your drill in reverse you begin and as i mentioned in this case this is the gravitational That's about in that neighborhood. You give it maybe one or two extra. And you clip it with a little length so you can make your point. Okay? And in this case, this will be easier to remove because we didn't have to put it through the eyelet like threading a needle. Okay? And you simply remove your shaft from your drill and you remove your coil. This is your gravitational, this is your magnetical, and now we'll need a piece for our center axis. You basically look at the length of the, the other coils and you want to just give yourself a little extra working room right about here. So this will be your axis uh, shaft in the center, okay? So we've got the three. And then we're going to need one final one, which is going to be your emotional and physical, okay? That is going to encompass the three that you see here, okay? So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so in this case what we'll use is a larger shaft and for the last one you actually can wind it by hand. So in fact if you even wanted to use uh, something that you have laying around you certainly may. In this case what I'm going to do is grab the end of a 
fishing pole. Isn't that something? And then what I'm going to use here is the end of the fishing pole, and I'm going to wind it loose because I want it to be able to be on the outer perimeter of these three. Okay? So we're going to start and we're going to wind it big because what we're going to do is allow it so that those can fit inside of it. And you can just kind of start off with your hand, holding that. Okay. And as Mr. Kesh mentioned, you don't have to wind in any particular direction. In this case, because we're dealing with field forces, it really doesn't matter. Okay. So we're going to just wind and we're going to make it loose so that um, they can fit inside. And then, of course, you can loosen it up with your hand. You can loosen it up with your hand as you go along. And so what I'm going to do in this case, because I want to keep the wider diameter, I'm going to continue to move it up as we go and wind it loose and remove as you go. That's actually what I'm doing here. Okay. Just about the length of these guys is what you want to do. And you remove as you go. I mean, if you have a shaft that's equal in diameter right across, then you wouldn't have to do that. You could just go in uh, revolutions around it. But in this case, because mine, I'm using the end of a uh, fishing pole, as you can see, uh, I have to kind of continue to move it up. So we're done with that. And then what we want to do then is just make sure that our gravitational, which is the bigger of these three, uh, actually fits inside of it. And then of course we can make the adjustment if, if need be so that it will. And that would be just simply opening up the coil a little more with your hand. This is all you need. You don't need to have a whole lot of winds on this, okay? And then we'll we'll try to see if we're if, if that fits. So open it up a little more. Just use your hand. And you know that's what Mr. Kesh also talked about. Sometimes people get a little too scientific. They get too much into the calculations and the multiplications and the you know estimations on. You know, this is all you need, folks. This is all you need. Okay, so now that we have that inside, what we can do is kind of tighten that up a little bit. Okay, this is basically all you need. Okay, see that? And then what we're going to do with the end of this, we are going to close this into a loop. Okay, so we'll just cut off a little bit of that excess right there. Okay, after we finish this, then we will nano coat using heat. So we close that loop right there. We'll take the next one. We're going to close that loop as well. Same situation. This one is actually going to extend out of the top of the wand. So we're going to close this as well. Okay, I'll be right here. Okay. So we close that loop. So we basically have two closed loops here. Okay. We have our gravitational. Okay, the gravitational is going to go into the center. Same situation. We'll just insert it from here, just like that. We'll have this piece extending up, same situation. We want to close this as well, loop it over. We'll cut off a little bit of, of that uh, excess. And you don't want to throw away any of your copper wires. That is such a valuable commodity with what we do with this technology plasma technology. What a beautiful technology. So you see now 
we have our um, emotional, we have our magnetical, we have our gravitational, and then we have our center axis. You place that right through the center. We're going to close that as well. You just make a loop coming around. Okay. All right. So you have the three. You kind of align them down here to a central point. Okay. And then once you have everything nice and even, okay, pretty much, then you can clip them at a point all together. Okay, now that we have this together like this, what we are going to do now is nano coat them. And we're going to nano coat them using heat. In this case, we don't even need <clears throat> to use the. Uh, we don't even you need to use the um, <clears throat> the grill. I'll just light uh, my propane torch. If I had matches, it would be so much easier. But uh, oh, I see. Here we are. Okay. So I've lit my propane torch. In this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of these um, wires that I have laying around. I'll just, you know, put a loop through it, like that. I might even use this bar because this wire has been softened. We're not yet nano-coated, so there's no concern there. And, and then here we are. This is what we do. We, 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 we nano-coat. Um, using heat. So you heat them just about where um, they're going to turn red hot. And as I mentioned before, even if they do turn red hot, just go over them after they cool down a little bit so you can have a nice, robust nano coating on there. Okay, let me bring this a little closer. So you guys can see, you know, how that's starting a nano coat. If I'm out of frame, I apologize. I'm actually uh, working with my camera on a, um, it's mounted on a fishing rod, quite honestly. I have a tripod here, but um, with all the angles that I have to deal with, I think, and, and then of course the elevation, so you guys can get a good view of my workbench here. Uh, it works just fine in the fishing rod because I have it um, stationed in a holder, you know, that's mounted to the wall. That's that white PVC that you see to your right. Okay. Okay, so we're going to heat this until it's evenly nano-coated. Just to save you some time, I'm going to pause here. This, this, it's just the heating and the nano-coating. So this is what you do. As you can see, we, we're starting to get that beautiful black nano-coating on the coils. You just want to, you know, take your time, go over it a few times, and just nano-coat it. You see how that's starting to happen? And the wonderful thing about it, when you do it this way, all together, you have a homogeneous nano coating. Everything is even. Right through. Completely. Okay. 
Okay. You see how that's going? Just like that, guys. Now, you might think, well, all it is is just some heated coils. But what you have to understand is with this nano coating, what we are creating is a direct connection into the plasma, which is all around us. Because what you actually do by heating up this copper to the point where it forms its own nano coating on itself. You bring it close to where it almost turns red hot. So the copper metal gets to a point where it almost wants to evaporate some of its properties. And as it cools down just before reaching that red hot state, it forms back on itself as a nano coating, which then enables you to have a direct connection with the plasma around you, which is everything. 